Rick and Morty, the most news in the morning, period. Weekday 6 Eastern. Well, balancing politics and ethics can be tough at times, especially on the campaign trail. Barack Obama's decision not to take public campaign funding and his demands for everyone to lay off of his wife, just a couple of ethics challenges in the campaign. And joining us now to talk about it, Bruce Weinstein. He's known as the ethics guy. He writes the ethics column for businessweek.com. Bruce, good to see you this you morning. Too, Karen. So earlier he had promised that if John McCain or his Republican uh, counterpart um, agreed to take yes. public financing a certain set amount of money that he'd go with it and uh, yesterday the announcement came that they're actually going to not do that and they're that frees them up to raise way more money but you say that he's actually doing the right thing it's praiseworthy now, it's important to keep a promise but there are other things sometimes that are more important let's say you promise your daughter you're going to take her whitewater rafting when you're on vacation in Wyoming but it turns out that weekend the the, the river is raging well, you know, you would say in this case, it's more important to avoid the danger of, of the water than to keep my promise. So, yes, it's important uh, to keep your promise, but it's also important to maybe look beyond. And you may recall last week when I was on this program, I presented a code of ethics for politicians. One of them is don't make promises you can't keep. That may be the take-home lesson here. What about, though, the, the whole entire um, issue of raising money and being yes. able to raise enormous amounts of money for your campaign. Well, you know, the spirit of the law that uh, John McCain co-sponsored in 2002 was an attempt to make sure that everyone's voice is heard. But the way it's played out, unfortunately, is that some special interests in political action committees are able to bypass uh, the spirit of the law and to raise funds and engage in some unfortunate uh, activities. And I think that's what Obama is trying to avoid, to make sure that everyone's voice is heard. And really, let's face it, that's really what uh, the spirit of campaign finance reform is all about. You know, it's interesting, uh, Barack Obama's campaign staffers, and much was made of this, uh, apparently asked two women who were wearing Muslim headscarves mm. to step out of a, a shot that was going to be televised. They were st standing behind him at a rally. Um, Obama actually called them yesterday and apologized yes. for the incident. But it does raise a bigger issue uh, when it comes to exactly how images are being exactly. used in the campaign and whether that's ethical. And speaking of images, when we see a Muslim uh, in popular culture on television and movies, they're almost always portrayed as terrorists, and that's just not fair. Most Muslim Americans are peace-loving and law-abiding, as are Jewish Americans and Christian Americans, and so it's in Obama's own interest to, to acknowledge that, and it's also true to his own platform of inclusiveness. However, he did apologize. He took responsibility for that serious mistake. He called the women himself, and that is a sign of good character, and, the, and that's something that we should all follow. The larger question, though, is why were they so leery of it and, and the possibility that these outside groups that you talked yes. about that are able to raise money outside yes. of the campaigns could use those images against him well, or any yes. of the candidates in, uh, as we head into the general election. It's a mistake to play to bigots, and you may recall that Jean Paul Sartre said, if the Jew did not exist, the anti-Semite would invent him. So bigots are going to use anything they can, whether it's based in reality or not. So the, the right thing to do there would be to do the right thing, uh, namely to include Muslim Americans in one's uh, images and uh, just not even address the bigotry that's out there. All right. Bruce Weinstein, the ethics columnist for businessweek.com. Great to see you. Thanks. You too, Karen.